Hey guys, John here, and welcome to Synthesizer Fundamentals. In this course, we're gonna break down everything about a synthesizer and really understand how everything works. So we're gonna be talking about oscillators, filters, effects, modulation, things like that. We're also gonna go into DSP a little bit, but don't worry, it's not gonna to get too complicated. It's gonna be easy to understand, and you're gonna get a lot of those aha moments. So without further ado, let's jump into it and let's get started. Okay, so we're here in module one, the sine wave. So the sine wave is the most important waveform and you're gonna find this out throughout the course if you haven't already. But we first should ask ourselves, what exactly is sound? Because we're making music at the end of the day, we might be making sound effects or stuff like that. So we should at least have a little bit of an understanding of what sound actually is. So sound is vibrations that pass through the air or a medium and can be heard when they reach our ears, right? So we hear sound throughout the day. We can hear birds chirping, music, stuff like that. But we also hear sound if we're underwater. If we're in space, we're not going to hear any sound, right? Because there's not necessarily a medium that the sound waves can actually travel through. So sound waves are made up of compressions and rarefactions. Now, what exactly does that mean? So compression is when the air pressure is going to be greater than the ambient air pressure. And then rarefaction is when the air pressure is less than ambient air pressure. And the speed at which these sound waves oscillate and how fast they move is going to determine the frequency or the pitch of that waveform. And then the loudness of a sound is determined by its intensity or by its amplitude. So let's load up Bitwig Studio and take a look at the most important waveform, which is, as you guessed it, the sine wave. Okay, so we're here in Bitwig, and the first thing that we want to do is start adding a polygrid so we can start piecing things together and start to understand what's all going on here. So let's click this plus, and then let's search for the polygrid, and let's select this guy and then open this up down here. So what we see is we have an oscillator and then it's going into an envelope and then it's going to our audio output. So let's delete everything and kind of remake this in real time. So the first thing that we need to add if we're kind of looking at an empty grid is an audio output, right? We need to hear what's actually going on. So here in the IO, there's an audio out. So we just drag and drop this inside here. And since we're talking about the sine wave, we need to bring in an oscillator that's gonna be producing a sine wave. So what we can do, we can search it up through here, but we can also go to the oscillator or we can right click depending on how you wanna do it. We can go over here to the oscillator section and find a sine wave and drag and drop this thing down over here. So we haven't necessarily connected anything yet. We have an oscillator that's making a sign and then we have our audio output. So before we connect this, we do wanna turn down our volume here just in case it's gonna be a little bit loud for us. So with this sine wave, this red dot right here is gonna be the output. So we're gonna be sending this signal out and it's gonna be going into our audio output. And as soon as we make this connection, we can see that the sine wave is constantly generating. It's going straight to our output. So for now, what we need to do is add an envelope so every time that we hit a node, we can hear the sine wave because after a while, that can get a little bit annoying. So over here in our menu, we can go to envelope and for this, we're gonna be doing an ADSR, which is a tactic case sustain release and we can drag and drop this right on the connection. We're gonna go into depth on envelopes a little bit later on, but basically once I hit a node, this is going to open up the envelope, allowing the sound to pass through to our output so we can hear it. So for now, let's bring up our sustain and we can bring up our volume to a more comfortable level. Something kind of like that. So every time I hit a note, it triggers that sine wave. Okay, so now we hear the sine wave, but what's also important is to actually see the sine wave, see what's actually going on here. So what we can do is up here on display, we have something called an oscilloscope, and this is gonna be very useful to kind of look at what's going on here. So we have this oscilloscope and we can send the output of the sine wave directly through here. Now it's important to click this guy and also go to pitch so we can actually see what the sine wave is doing. Now, right now, the way this is routed is that it's going out of this oscillator directly into the oscilloscope. So the sine wave is constantly generating, it's constantly making this, this waveform. Now, if I were to take the output from the ADSR and plug it into here, or maybe plug it into the bottom, it's gonna be a flat line, right? Because we don't necessarily have our key press, so it's an opening, opening the envelope. But as soon as we do, we can see it generating like that. So for now, let's disconnect this and let's kind of just focus on what this sine wave is doing. So every time we hear it, we can actually see the sine wave going on. Now, this may look very basic and on a certain fundamental aspect, I suppose it is, but there's actually a lot of important information that this graph is telling us, right? So if we look at our inspector panel by clicking on our oscilloscope, there's a couple of things that I want to point out here. So right over here where it says range, we can see that there's a plus and a minus and this is set to one. 
So basically what we're looking at is going to be a bipolar signal. So if we have this at one, we can see that this is going to be the center line, which is going to represent zero. Up here at the top is going to represent one, and down here at the bottom is going to represent negative one. And this is going to be measuring the amplitude or the volume of the waveform. So a way we can bring this down is we can attenuate this signal here by adding, you guess it, an attenuate. So we can search here ATT, and it brings up the attenuate. So we can drag and drop this guy right here on this output. So it's leaving the oscillator going to this attenuate node. And as we bring this down, we can see that the waveform gets smaller. And if we play a note, we can see that it fades to silence. So we play a note and we don't see any waveform or we don't hear anything. But as soon as we bring this back up here, There we go. So next thing I was gonna tell you is that we're talking about compression and rarefaction, right? So if we look at this, uh, this oscillator here, it's kind of going up and down and up and down and up and down. Once it passes this positive territory, this is gonna be the compression or the high pressure, right? And once it goes below the zero line, so into the negative territory, this is gonna be called the rarefaction, right? Going below into the negative, negative one territory. So here's a really interesting image I found on the internet that I think shows this concept off pretty well. So on the left-hand side, we can see that we have a speaker and then this red line is gonna represent the sine wave. And as it goes above here into positive territory, this is gonna be the high pressure or the compression. And once it dips down below here, this is gonna be the low pressure or the rarefaction. Now on the right-hand side is basically the same diagram, but more so showing what's happening to the air molecules. And then down here at the bottom is some fancy math in case it's something that you're interested in. I've also included the link to the website that I found this on in case you wanna read a little bit more about it. So now let's talk a little bit about frequency or the pitch of a signal. And to understand this, we really need to first know what a wave period is. A wave period is when a waveform completes both the compression and the rarefaction phase of its cycle. So let's take a closer look at the sine wave here. Now this is an oscilloscope just like we saw a little bit ago and what's happening here is that we have a sine wave and this is showing off what is one wave period, right? So if we look at this a little closer, we can see that this is crossing zero. It goes up into the high pressure territory and then it dips down into the low pressure and then once it comes back to where it started from, that's gonna be one wave period. And this is referred to as the cycles per second or CPS or Hertz or HZ. And how many cycles per second a waveform completes is going to be the frequency of that signal. So a waveform that completes 1,000 cycles per second, that's going to be 1,000 hertz or 1 kilohertz. And once we pass 1,000, we add a lowercase k. So kilo is going to be khz, so lowercase k, capital H, and a lowercase z. A little fun fact, Hertz is actually named after the German physicist Heinrich Hertz. So in case anybody asks you what that's from, now you know. So let's jump into Bitwig and bring up the test tone device and see how this works in real time. So back here in Bitwig, what we need to do is add a test tone. So down over here at the bottom, we can select this plus here and then search for test. And then we see test tone right over here. Let's double click this and we can hear this test tone. So we don't necessarily want this going off the whole time. We can drag and drop this to the left hand side. And remember how we use this audio out module to actually listen to the sound that we're programming in here. Now, if we want to bring this in, we're going to need an audio in. So over here in the IO, let's grab audio in and drag and drop this down over here. So now what we need to do is connect this. So first, what we can do is connect this to our oscilloscope so we can actually see what's happening here and then also connect this to our ADSR. So when we play a note, we can actually hear it and we can turn up the gain a little bit too. So right now, it doesn't matter what note that we play because this is playing a specific frequency. And if you look down over here, this is gonna be 1000 Hertz or one kilohertz. What we can do is we can hit control and we can click on this knob and we can enter any value that we want. So if we wanna go for A440, we type in 440 and that's going to be an A. And this is also good to kind of sweep the frequencies in case you wanna to listen to anything specifically, test speakers, test your headphones, stuff like that. And you can also see how the pitch changes over here in the oscilloscope as we move this knob. So now that we understand frequency, the next thing we need to talk about is going to be amplitude. And when we refer to amplitude or the loudness of a sound, we're gonna be using the decibel or the DB, named after the great Alexander Graham Bell. The decibel is a logarithmic scale equal to one tenth of a bell and is always a comparison of two values and is often going to be the threshold of hearing. So if two notes are played at the same time at the same dB level, that's approximately three dB increase in level. 
So in other words, a 3 dB increase is approximately a doubling of power. And there's gonna be many different versions of decibels that we use or that you might see. Some of those are gonna be dB, dBm, dBu, dBv, dBfs, dBspl, and so on. And we may go into depth in a future video if that's something you guys are interested in. And just for now, remember that the dB is a logarithmic measurement in how we measure the loudness or the amplitude of a sound. So in the next part of the Synthesizer Fundamentals course, we're gonna be discussing phase and why it's so important. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and look forward to the next episode because I have a couple cool things to share with you guys. So yeah, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.